So I will not speak about Tizabri, but of the other immunobiologicals. Mm -hmm. And I will focus mostly on rituximab and a little bit on other monoclonal antibodies. So to start this, to prepare this talk, what I did is I went to see the pharmacologist of my institution and asked him to help me to try to have a sense of all the cases of PML associated with drugs. And for that, we went into the WHO database, but with several warnings. You have to know that not all the, the, the countries report uh, the cases. There has been estimation of a very high level of under-reporting. There is also a tendency to report mostly the PML cases that have been associated with novel drugs, the so-called notoriety bias. And when a, a, a referral is well done, so the, 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 the doctor uh, uh, announce a case of PML. If the patient with PML had, for instance, a cancer with different drugs, then the PML cases will appear with each of these drugs, which could lead to, this time, an overestimation. So it's really only a rough estimation, and with, with all these warnings, here is the list of the PML cases between 2004 and 2011, and you can see that these are only conventional agents. You, we have not to forget that simply the corticosteroids uh, can uh, be associated with PML. I would say also, for instance, cyclophosphamide has quite high numbers, fludarabine. But once again, don't take it as a pure incidence per drug. Remember my warnings. And these are the PML hits with the monoclonal antibodies, and that have been associated with PML also in, the, in, in PUM meds. That, that means that here there is some sort of confirmation by peer-reviewed articles. And you can see that indeed rituximab stands up with a high number of PML-associated cases. But what does it mean? So rituximab is an anti-CD20 monoclonal antibodies that targets pre-B and B cells, but not stem cells nor plasma cells. And it has quite a large indication, non-Hodgkin lymphoma, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, rheumatoid arthritis as a second intention drug for moderate to severe cases, and we will come back to this specifically. And systemic lupus erythematosus, to my knowledge, is not a recognizing ind indication, but nevertheless, this drug has frequently been administered in patients with SLE, and it may come on the market for multiple sclerosis. As you know, there were some good results in trials. So Dr. Berger uh, already alluded to this paper. In this paper, 57 HIV-negative patients with PML were reported. 52 of them had lymphoma or leukemia, well-known disease associated with PML. Five had autoimmune disease, including two with SLE. But all these PML cases that occur with rituximab exposure were always associated also with other immunosuppressive drugs, mostly steroids. The median interval between last doses and diagnosis was 5.5 months, mortality high, Dr. Berger said that already. But here, it's not in the paper, but at the time the paper was published, there had been more than 30 cases of PML cases in SLE patients who had not been exposed to rituximab, which this is important to keep in mind when we deal with disease that by themselves uh, favor the onset of PML. So is rituximab really conferring an added risk to PML? So this paper seems to, to, to confirm this notion. In this, in this study, the authors uh, studied patients with autologous stem cell transplantation and 276 received quite a high uh, intensive chemotherapy with cytarabine, cyclophosphamide, carmistine, etoposide, but there was no unusual viral infection. However, in the 62 patients who received exactly the same treatment plus rituximab, there were two cases of PML and two cases of cytomegalovirus systemic infections. Therefore, if you do a Fisher test just for PML, for getting the CMV, it's still significant for an effect of rituximab. So there are some hints 
that rituximab contributes to increase the risk of PML occurrence. In this other study, which is a retrospective monocentric cohort study, almost 1,000 1, non-Hodgkin lymphoma patients were studied from 94 to 2008. Half of them had been exposed to at least one dose of rituximab. And you see here that there were not really differences between those who had been exposed and not exposed, ex except for age. The age was higher in those who had not been exposed, and there were more male among, among the exposed than the non-exposed. But as you can see, there were five cases in those who had received at least one doses of rituximab and known in the non-exposed. So the authors tried to estimate, based on this data, an incidence rate of PML out of 1,000 patients here exposed to rituximab that would be 2.4. Rheumatoid arthritis is, as I said before, an autoimmune disease, but this autoimmune disease is a very rare, PML is a very rare complication of rheumatoid arthritis. In the patients by Amund, and we will see that again, there were no PML cases in 72,000 patients with rheumatoid arthritis. And in the Calabrese paper, the incidence was only 0.4 out of 100,000 patients. And you see here the table of all the autoimmune disease reported by Amund in the recent paper in neurology. And the, there was no cases of PML in rheumatoid arthritis patients. And I can also emphasize that there was no cases of PML in MS patients. So, rheumatoid arthritis is, we can conclude that it is a disease which is not naturally associated with PML. And yet, Clifford recently published a paper where he describes four cases of PML and he adds a fifth case that was recently reported in the literature, which makes five cases of PML out, out of uh, one, 100,000, uh, 130,000 rheumatoid arthritis patients exposed to rituximab, including one of these patients who had really a minimal immunosuppression. And they estimate that the risk of PML associated with rituximab is one out of 25,000. What about efalizumab? <clears throat> I have on only one slide on this drug. As you know, it is an anti-CD11A. Its indication was for psoriasis. And only 166 patients had received this drug for more than three years. And out of these 166 patients, three developed a proven PML and one a su suspected PML, uh, all having received, again, efalizumab for more than three years in monotherapy. So, as you know, the drug was voluntarily withdrawn in the spring 2009. And the, we can estimate the incidence of PML in these patients who received the drugs for more than three years to be quite high, 1 to 40 to 1 to 60 approximately. And Heinz Windel will come back uh, in more details to the mechanism of efalizumab, but this is just a paper from his group in press where the authors tried to, to understand how efalizumab could favor the onset of PML. And this probably has to do with T cell priming in lymph nodes, with uh, preventing activated T cell to cross the blood brain barrier, and also to preventing activated CD8 T cells to really uh, efficiently lyse JCV infected oligonatocytes. PML and alemtizumab, it's an anti-CD52 monoclonal antibody that decrease in a very large extent B and T cells for at least two years. So, such as Dr. <coughs> Berger wrote in his paper, one would really expect a lot of PML cases to be associated with this drug if, if this was only due to immunosuppression. This drug has been associated with a non-Hodgkin lymphoma, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, and maybe will come on the market for multiple sclerosis. And surprisingly, there has been only three cases of PML reported, to my knowledge, uh, with alemtizumab. And in these three cases, there was some good explanation to develop a PML even without the help of alemtizumab, since one patient had a chronic lympho lymphocytic leukemia, another one a lymphoma, a third one a lung transplant. 
And finally, anti-TNF-alpha. These, these are a compound of drugs indicated for rheumatoid arthritis and other kind of arthritis. As you know, one of these uh, anti-TNF-alpha, Lenercept, worsen relapsing remitting and MS, and this was written already a long time ago in a paper in neurology. But since then, some authors have hypothesized that maybe this worsen was not due really to the drug itself, but to the excipient. But this is another story. Anyway, uh, there is a Spanish initiative, Biogeas, that is a prospective multicenter data bank on side effects of biological effects. They, they really gathered many centers in Spain, and they have a peculiar interest for anti-TNF-alpha drugs. And they have reported that these drugs have been associated, even if we, if we don't understand very well how, with MS-like disease, optic neuritis, demyelinating peripheral neuropathies, but no convincing cases of PNR. So, in summary, rituximab most probably confers an added risk of PML when it is administered to patients who have PML-favoring disease and or when it is administered with concomitant immunosuppressive drugs. There are less evidence, but still some evidence, especially with the case of rheumatoid arthritis, that rituximab in monotherapy may favor PML. But again, this is less clear, much less clear than for Tizabri. Ephalizumab confers a very high risk of PML, even in monotherapy, but this has been withdrawn. And there are no convincing data that alemtizumab and anti-TNF-alpha really increase the risk of PML above the background. <laughs>